I'm not. I'm coming to you today. I appreciate it if you're listening to this. And uh, I know some of my friends and my brothers in the Lord, sisters in the Lord, might not agree with this. But I believe God would have me share this. Uh, today, as we, you know, as, as we prayed, some of us, and, and I can tell you I didn't pray a whole lot today because there are some things I see coming and some things that I'm concerned about with our country and our leadership and the people of God. But my brother in the Lord posted a video, and uh, you'll be able to see it right under here. And, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I, I love him, and I agree with him on so many things. And it is my desire that this country would turn back to God and be once again one nation under God. You know, for years I've, I've looked to the leaders that said that they were going to do some of the things that our, our nation should repent for. I remember going to the Stand in the Gap meeting and with, with million, a million, at least a million, it seemed like more to me, but we were kneeling and praying and repenting for the sins of the nation and repenting for the church. And, and I believe God gave us a reprieve. You know, reprieve. But, you know, the thing is, is that as I've thought about this today and as I prayed in this time, you know, I, I realize as a street minister, as someone who's gone out and shared the gospel, mo most if not all of my Christian life, I've been a Christian now for 37 years, and, and God gave me a heart for the lost. And, and, and then we have, it's not the great option is the great commandment he sent us out on. And as my brother said, the church needs to repent and get right with God and give God that place he deserves in the church. Now we're in a time that I believe judgment is coming. I've, I've felt it for years now and, uh, and I know some would disagree with me. But you know the thing is, is that as I've looked to my leaders over the years, they said they were going to do something about the sin of abortion, the murder of millions and millions of innocent babies. And I, I voted for leaders that said they would do something about it. And even when they had all the House and the Senate and the presidency, they still didn't pass anything. Now this president here, he has put some judges in there that could make some changes. But our nation is still in a place that we kill millions of babies every year. Every day, babies are being slaughtered for convenience. Uh, homosexual marriage, and we had a, a Democrat running for office kissing his legal husband, and he's a man, and they're a man. Now, you know the thing is, is sin is sin, and people need to get saved and repent of their sin and turn their life over to Jesus whether it's the sin of adultery, fornication, or homosexuality. Sin is sin. I want to see all come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as we said today in this country, in a place, to where we're seeing something happen here, I think it's time for the church to repent. And it's time for the church to realize that in the near future, this time that we have, God's going to open up a window for us to share with a lot of people who are really scared. I believe the Lord has held some of us back, and he's kept some of us, and he's going to keep us safe, and he's going to keep us well so that we can go to these people that are going to be terribly fearful and terribly upset because their whole world's crashing around their heads, and we can tell them, look, there's one life, there's one light, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. But the thing is, is this comes on our nation and on the world. Remember, I want to read a scripture to you. I'm going to read two verses in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not feel ashamed. But in the name, let him glorify God. For it is the time of judgment a time for judgment, to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? 
my friend, it's time for the church. As my brother said in the previous video, we don't see everything alike. I love him, and he's a man of God. But it's time for the church to repent. And it's time for the church to present the gospel to this world. Because, my friend, every Christian that might hear this knows this. Just as other times of great distress in this nation and in this world, people had looked for an answer. And we know there's only one answer. There's only one salvation. There's only one God. And that's in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross on Calvary for us. My friend, we must be ready to suffer, to present the gospel. I have friends and brothers and sisters in the Lord that have been out this week preaching the gospel at their own peril in, in Florida. I was in New Orleans in, in the middle of, I'm older, you know, and me and my wife, we broke away from all that we saw bad coming, and we went to New Orleans. When we came back, the Lord said, lock it down. But I know he's soon to get us out of that lockdown because this world is going to be in turmoil. And there are going to be those that will attack us when we come out and say, look, there's only one answer. You cannot trust in the money. You cannot trust in your government, your politicians, and your things, and your medicine. You can only trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. There will be those that will attack us. But we must be ready in this time. If we're to see revival, the church must repent of being lackadaisical and sitting on their hands in pews, listening to preachers and not doing anything for the cause of Christ. We were not saved to be bench warmers and to send money to people on TV who are going to get them a new jet or a new home or a new car. We were saved to represent the Lord Jesus Christ as a light in this world. And at this time, in this dark time, that light needs to shine. And God's church needs to stand up and be ready. Some will go and lose their life. And lose their life. Many will lose their life. Many will be helping the sick and treating, treating those who are going to come down with this disease. And they're going to put their own life in peril. But when that man or that woman they're caring for is fixing to slip off into eternity, they'll be the ones there to shine the light of Christ to them so that they might come to God before they die. My friend, what, what, what greater thing can a man do or a woman do than to lay down his life for a friend? Jesus was a friend of sinners. And we're supposed to go out and lay down our life for him. So some of you are out there now, and some of us will be out there more as this progresses. But let me tell you what we need to do. We need to answer God's call for that great commission. Thousands upon thousands of saints of God coming out of your homes and your churches and your pews and standing up and say, it's bad. Everything's falling down. But let me tell you about Jesus. My friend, it's time to stand up and, and tell this world about the only salvation because many are going to die. Many will slip into eternity. They need to hear the gospel. Thank you for listening to this. I love you. Jesus' name.